Do you guys like my water bottle? I don't know, maybe some of you in the front row can see, but uh, it's got a Jaguar on it. What a coincidence, right? <laughs> um, anyway. Jaguars are part of something called the big cat family, as I'm sure you probably know. This includes animals like tigers, and lions, and cheetahs. We all know about it. Now, have any of you ever seen a big cat like that in real life? Now, I'm not talking you went to see National Geographic or Lion King, no. I mean, you went to the zoo maybe, you went you know, on a safari, maybe out in real life even you've seen one of these. Yeah, so quite a bit of you. Um, all in all, these are pretty powerful and incredible cats. And um, here's some stats for you. Cheetahs can run up to 60 miles an hour, which is as fast as a car goes on a highway. Lions can jump up to 36 feet in a single leap, while tigers can weigh up to 800 pounds. All in all, these cats pack a serious punch, and they're incredibly powerful, strong, and even deadly. Now, I personally, in that regard, feel kind of humbled and a little bit small and weak when I'm in these big cats' vicinity, simply because they have so much power and they possess so much strength. I personally couldn't imagine being put face to face with one of these creatures with no cage or anything in between. I mean, they've got long claws, sharp teeth, and they're all in all very deadly and powerful. You know what that reminds me of? My inner demons. Just these little voices in my head that tell me that I can't do things. I know you all have them too. They're just little issues and insecurities that we all have about ourselves. No one is immune to them, no matter your race, class, location, etc. A big inner demon or overcoming such an inner demon can sometimes feel as insurmountable of a challenge as coming face to face with one of these big cats. It might feel hopeless or that the only reasonable thing to do is to turn around and run the other way. But it's not always as dangerous as it seems. Check it out. Yes, this is what you think it is. This is a man inside a lioness's enclosure giving her a big old friendly hug. Pretty crazy, right? Well, the two men behind these picture, behind this picture is uh, Valentin Groiner and Mikael Legarth. Now, these two men are conservationists and they met on a volunteering trip. They're both passionate about the art of conservation. Their goal was to create a strong bond between people and their surrounding wilderness. They felt that this could help create positive change within communities because by helping to have a better understanding of surrounding wilderness, it could help lead to its conservation. Makes sense, right? Well, all in all, these two men wanted to make a difference. So, they decided to start a wildlife preservation project. Now, of course, this was no easy task, as you can probably imagine. However, they managed to succeed, and in 2010, they founded the Modisa Wildlife Project in Mount Botswana, Africa. Now, if you've ever been to Southern Africa, or you know the climate there, it's got two seasons, a wet season and a dry season. The humidity is off the charts, the climate is always hot, and yet, this is where these two men decided to start their project. The goal of Modisa, as Valentina and Mikhail so eloquently put it, was to essentially be advocates for the wildlife of Botswana. Mikel and Valentin wanted to give animals a voice where they saw that they had none. One animal in particular that they were able to provide a voice for was Serga. Serga the lioness. She's the same one that we saw hugging Valentin in that earlier shot. Um, now, Serga was born in Botswana. She was living in Botswana, and at just a few weeks old, she was abandoned by her parents, and her siblings were killed and she found herself all alone, caged up at a commercial farm in Botswana. Then, along comes Valentin. And what does he do? Well, he ended up rescuing her. He brought her to safety, and he and Mikhail essentially nursed her back to health. Now, once Serga was all healthy and happy and ready to go back out into the wild, the two men came to a sort of a crossroads. On one hand, they really wanted to release Serga back into the wild because they saw what happened to lions when you left them in captivity or in a zoo. They became domesticated. 
They lost their moxie, they lost that fire that made them wild, and they didn't want that for Sorga. They wanted her to have a better life than that. On the other hand, they unfortunately couldn't just release her back into the wild. It wasn't that easy. This is because Sorga had had too much human interaction at this point while she was being nursed back to health by Mikhail and Valentin. However, they did manage to come to a compromise. At this point, only Mikhail and Valentin will interact with Sorga to help limit her human interaction. Now, what they do when they do interact with her is they essentially act as her parents would have if they were still around. So that includes teaching her how to be a proper lion. Think about what a lion has to learn to do. This would include things like stalking, hunting, and even killing. Valentin and Mikhail taught Sorga all of this and so much more. Basically, as I said, they would act as her adopted parents. Now, in return, Sergo would act as their child. So they play together and have fun together as friends. Now, as you can probably imagine, this relationship that Mikel, Valentin, and Sergo all have is one of the only ones of its kind. This is mostly due to the dangerous and unpredictable nature of lions. As you probably already know, they're incredibly dangerous and can even be deadly. And yet, despite this compelling fact, Valentin and Mikhail continue to do this, day in and day out. They go into Serga's enclosure, they get close to her, they hug her, they play with her. Despite the fact she has her claws, she has her teeth, she has the absolute capability to inflict some serious damage. And yet, they fully trust Serga with their lives, which I think is incredible. Now, let's back up a little bit and talk about lion relationships with humans at the time. They were the worst that they'd ever been in. Now, in Botswana, the way that a lot of people make a living there is through commercial cattle farming. So there are a lot of farms there, a lot of land where there's a lot of cows grazing through, and that's how a lot of people there make their money and provide for their families. Also in Botswana are a lot of wild lions. Now, you can put two and two together. The lions, seeing these cattle as free food, they would come in and they would kill and eat this cattle. Understandably, this was a big issue for all these commercial farmers because what this would lead to is them potentially not being able to produce enough beef, not sell enough beef, and not provide enough money to support their families. Basically, the lions were putting the farmers' livelihoods in jeopardy and they were bad for them. Now, lion populations at the time were also a little bit rocky in the sense that they were sort of teetering on being endangered. And so the Botswana wanted to do something about it, to do something about it quick. So in 2013, there became a complete ban on trophy hunting of any kind in Botswana. Great, no more lions being hunted for game. Fantastic, right? No more lions being killed, their populations have got to skyrocket. Well, it's not quite that simple, unfortunately. Here's how it all went down. Basically, the trophy hunters would come into Africa, to Botswana, and they would hunt animals like lions and elephants for their ivory tusks. And they would leave behind the bodies of these elephants, which uh, the lions relied upon pretty heavily for food. So once you took trophy hunters out of the equation, there were no longer so many elephants just laying around for the lions to eat. And so where did the lions turn to for their food? Well, they turned back to these cattle farms. And so what this eventually led to was more and more cattle being killed by lions. Again, the farmers' livelihoods were being put at risk. And so this put these commercial farmers in a really difficult situation, and they really only had one thing left to do. What they were able to do, and what they had to do for that matter, was to essentially regard the lions as what you would call nuisance wildlife, which, since they were putting their livelihoods in jeopardy, they were able to actually bypass the uh, the hunting ban, and thus they were allowed to kill the lions by law. And so that's what they had to do, just so that they could survive and provide for their families. And so they would shoot and they would kill these lions, unfortunately. Now, what this led to was actually an even lower lion population than before the trophy hunting ban. So we had taken a step in the completely wrong direction. In this way, Valentin and Mikel are actually battling the ban on lion hunting, because they saw what it did to the lion population, decreased it instead of increased it. Now, the, the idea that they're trying to put forth is that it's important to know all the facts before consulting to your emotions, because that's exactly what happened in Botswana. Mr. Lagarth actually did a TED talk on this very subject in Copenhagen a few years back. 
What may Kellen Valens have is what you might call a controversial stance, right? Because they're against the ban on lion hunting, and yet they are trying to bring up the lion population. Doesn't really make sense unless you know all the facts. And so in this way, if you didn't know all the information that I have just told you, you might think that they were actually hurting the lion population instead of helping it. And this is absolutely not true. Both Valentin and Mikhail have done an incredible amount of work in and out of Botswana to help bring the lion story to life. That's how I found out about it. Despite the doubts of themselves and others, they were able to achieve this. And where did it all start? Well, it all started with a little kid named Val Greiner, who grew up in Germany. And he had a passion for helping animals, especially cats. And he just did what he loved to do, day in and day out. Eventually, he combined ideas with Mikhail Legarth, and thus, Modisa was born. Now, as I've already mentioned, starting your own wildlife reservation, or any business for that matter, is really, really hard. And yet, they were able to succeed because they let their passion for helping animals overcome their fear of failure. Valentin Greiner and Mikhail Legarth faced off against a lion. Now, I'm not talking about Sergei the lioness, no, but an angry cat, a cat that wanted them to fail, a cat that wanted them to doubt themselves, a cat that wanted them to see themselves as being smaller than their fears. We all have our doubts about everything. We all doubt ourselves at one point or another, whether it's low self-esteem or lack of confidence or underestimating our own capabilities. We all see ourselves as being inferior to everyone else at one point or another. Nobody is immune to this. But if you can believe that you can succeed, then your chances of doing so will skyrocket. Why is this? Well, because that's you, overcoming that big cat. Big cat equals doubts. So, what should you do? Stand up to that big cat. Why not be stronger? Why not be braver? Why not be louder than your big cats? Be bigger than your fears. Defeat the big cat in your life. How many of you have a big cat in your life? For one person, it might be a fear of others' judgment. For another, it might be a fear of failure, fear of public speaking, fear of the dark, fear of spiders, whatever it may be. Nobody is immune to these fears and everybody has them. I know I do. So, what's important to remember? Don't be scared or discouraged. Face your big cats. Look them in the eye, stand them up, because as you do so, these big cats tend to shrink. Your fears, your insecurities, your issues are not bigger than you. Don't let them control your path in life. If you're lucky, you'll end up like Val and Mikkel did. They have learned to love and appreciate their big cat because they understand that having fears or doubts doesn't make you weak. In fact, what makes you stronger is standing up to those issues and learning from them. I know for a fact that all of you can learn to appreciate your big cats because they can teach you a lot. So why not do it? Thank you.